as long as you say Jesus, all the sins beforehand are forgiven and any sin you commit after doesn't matter. That's dumb. It's just stupid. everyone, welcome to this episode of the Michael Voris Show. I'm your host, Michael Voris. That's why we call it the Michael Voris Show, because I'm... The, anyway. Uh, today we're going to be talking about purgatory. Is it real? Lots of people go, no, nah, that's just some Catholic myth. That's some crazy thing. Before we get into it, just want to remind you, today's show is sponsored by the Strength and Honor Conference. We're going to have it's the men's conference we have every summer here. First weekend in August, August 4th through the 6th. Just go on the website, click there, churchmilton.com. Click on the thing, save a seat, bring your kids, bring it. It's just great stuff. Men's conference, need to get back to Catholic manhood. Now, purgatory. Before we get into it, let's take a little look at uh, what some people's thoughts are about purgatory. There is no such thing as purgatory. There is only heaven or hell. And the Bible says that when a person dies, they spend the rest of their eternity in one of these two places. The good news is you don't have to spend your eternity in hell. If you know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you know that you are going to heaven when you die. It is created by the Roman Catholic religion, but it goes against the Bible because in 1 John 1, 7, it says the blood of Jesus Christ purifies us from all sin not most sins, not many sins, not some sins. The blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin. Purgatory isn't in the Bible. It's, it's only in Maccabees. So then, with purgatory, if it's not in the Bible... Then it's not real. They have a bigger problem. See, that they are willing to go against the Bible and to believe a doctrine that's not in the Bible. And I actually have a study called The Gospel According to Peter. And it's amazing. It's interviewing Peter and say, Peter, do you believe in purgatory? And what Peter said is that silver and gold, you know, we don't have silver and gold to purchase our salvation because remember they were trying to. And he says, no, no, it's only through the precious blood of Christ. Oh, not so fast. Let's take a little closer examination of that, shall we? Mm -hmm. They're ridiculous. They don't have the slightest idea what they're talking about. Let's go first of all about the whole thing about is purgatory in the Bible? Well, the word purgatory is in the Bible, but you know, for all of the Christians out there, neither is the word Trinity. Do you not believe the word Trinity because it's not in the Bible? Concepts can certainly develop, uh, but interestingly for the Jews, before any notion of Trinity came along, the notion of purgatory was well, well ensconced in Judaism. Now, the reason they can say it's not in the Bible is because they're forgetting to tell you that Martin Luther tore the Bible apart. And one of the reasons he tore it apart was because the book of Maccabees, 1st and 2nd Maccabees, 2nd Maccabees talks about purgatory. It doesn't say the word purgatory, but it talks about, let's set the scene for you. So there's this giant battle. Judas Maccabees is the general. Uh, they're fighting this you know, huge warrior, you know, big battle the whole bit. His side wins. And he goes out, surveys the dead, battles over, you know, think of like the, uh, you know, gladiator where they're kind of like looking through all the dead and there's, you know, good guys and bad guys all laying there together. Okay, so he uh, starts looking for his dead with his commanders and they're rolling over the bodies. And they notice that some of their own soldiers have an amulet under their uh, armor of the opposing side's gods. And they start seeing these everywhere. And he takes up a collection and he sends the collection back to the temple in Jerusalem for prayers to be offered. These guys are dead. They're dead. So why are you praying for them? If there's just heaven and just hell, well, you don't need the prayers if you're in heaven, and the prayers don't help you if you're in hell. This is hundreds of years before the church, before the Catholic church comes into existence. So, uh, the, the idea that the Jews already had the notion in their minds as part of their religious practice is borne out right there. Let's just say, we're not going to say it, but let's just pretend Martin Luther was right. And the book of Maccabees and first, first Maccabees, second Maccabees, the wisdom literature, all the rest of it should be chucked out. Well, it still doesn't matter if it wasn't inspired. It still is a recording, a historical recording of the beliefs of the Jews, that there was a place of purgation, 
They didn't call it that. So it doesn't matter what you call the place. It's the concept behind it. So sure enough. And what does it say? It says when he took up the collection and sent it to Jerusalem, it was a good and wholesome thing that he did so that the dead might be released from their sins. That is the operating definition of purgatory. Now, you saw one of the other things, like, oh, the Catholic Church made this up. Oh, this didn't happen, blah, blah, blah. Um, one of the things that Protestants and very poorly educated Catholics, which unfortunately is most of them, don't really understand is the flow from the Old Testament to the New. Uh, in a great 60,000-foot view, St. Augustine says, the New Testament lays hidden in the Old, and the Old Testament is revealed in the New. Israel, as a people, is the Catholic Church sort of in the womb. It's going to be given birth to in the church. That's why when you go to a Catholic Mass, at least a proper Catholic Mass, all of the uh, uh, sacramental and ritual elements that were in place for temple worship, not synagogues today in New York, because it's a whole different brand of Judaism, that you have a priest offering sacrifice with candles and incense, wearing robes, reading from the Torah, reading from the scriptures, all of these things. You're singing Alleluia. You're acknowledging the angelic realm. Everything that happened in the Old Testament as far as the ritual is exactly what happens in Catholic Mass. It's just a transfer, and the, the fulcrum point, if you want to put it that, is, is our Lord himself. Our Lord is the fulfillment of the Old Testament, complete fulfillment of it. And if you're some crazy Protestant who says that's not the case, well, then you're not Christian. That's exactly the point, that all of the Old Testament is subsumed in Christ and he becomes the New Testament. Testament is just another word for covenant. So the Old Covenant is fulfilled in the New Covenant. The uh, old Jewish religion, all of it is fulfilled in Christ in the New Religion. All of his followers, the initial followers, they're all Jews. Of course, I mean, that one guy, that crazy thing, well, Peter and Paul don't say anything about it. Uh, it, it's it's just an absurdity. They, they also don't say an awful lot about a lot of other things. It doesn't mean they're not true. It doesn't mean it wasn't part of their lived experience. Peter and Paul both died in Rome in the mid-60s, 60 AD and you know, the, the conflagration of Nero. When people were being killed, Christians, Catholics, were being killed by Nero and then you know, the persecutions took place after that, you go to Rome today, even today, you go into the catacombs and you see etched on the stones of the uh, of the, the grave markers of many of the Catholics who are buried right near Peter and Paul. There's prayers for the dead. Please pray for me. Please pray for me and my wife. Why? If you're in heaven, you don't need the prayers. If you're in hell, they don't do you any good. The idea of purgatory is a is begins in Judaism, which is Catholicism in the womb. And when it comes to birth, all of these things continue. You 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 grow. You develop, but you're the same person from being conceived until you're born and die at 70 or 80 or 90 or whatever it is. You're the same person. Obviously, you have different experiences and, and things are added on to you, but, but the, the what is being added on to hasn't changed. Uh, it, the set of experiences obviously has, but you're still the same person. I mean, you're in the womb and you're this big or you're 80 or 90 and you're laying in your deathbed and you're that big. It's still the same person just added on to by experiences. So... When the church comes to the point of offering masses and praying for the dead, they're doing what Maccabee, Judas Maccabee, had done 300, 400 years earlier. That had gone on 500 years before that and 500 years before that. The idea that you are in some sort of, uh, you know, you're just heaven or hell like that one crazy kid was, hey, he's just heaven and there's just hell. Um you better hope there's a purgatory there, young man. And if you want to know why, well, let me tell you why you better hope there's a purgatory. St. John in his Apocalypse makes it very clear. It says, nothing unclean shall enter in. Heaven, he's talking about. His Apocalypse is about heaven. Really? Nothing unclean. Well, so what's unclean? Well, anything that's in sin. So you have to have... Uh, you have to be perfect. No blemish, no nothing. That's the point of purgatory, that all of that is purged away. Your appetite for sin is certainly purged away. 
uh, your appetite for sin is purged away the moment you behold God and you understand like how horrible and evil and rotten and just disgusting and all of that sin is. You don't have anything to do with it anymore. You go to purgatory, you have to pay for the sin. The divine justice must be satisfied. Um, now, Protestants will say, some crazy heard one guy there, everything's taken care of, you know, just the blood of the lamb and everything's done. To open up the gates, if that's the case, that all that had to happen was just Jesus die and you go, yay, Jesus, and you waltz into heaven. If that's the case, why was he telling his followers, pick up your cross and follow me? I mean, presumably if they're his followers, they've already said, yay, Jesus. So why do you have to go do stuff after that? The, all over the Old Testament, in the New Testament, you're going to be judged according to your acts. What happened when those? What happens to you when those acts somehow uh, come up short? You either do stuff you don't, you, you shouldn't do, or you're doing stuff that you shouldn't do. What what happens there? Um, it, there's also a failure on the part of Protestants. Remember, Protestantism is a heresy. It's absolutely crazy heresy, and. Uh, as all heresies are, but this one has had so much staying power that it has perverted people's intellects. So let's say a, uh, uh, a young 14-year-old, that kid in that TikTok video, look, he's about 14, 16 or whatever. Let's say he's lived an absolute perfect life. Everything's fine. Uh, you know, he said Jesus at some altar call, you know, three or four years earlier when he was 12 or 13. And now he's like, oh, that's it. Well, let's say he is in a, a, a friend's uh, store. Let's say he's there. And, uh, you know, he, he notices that the, the clerk at the counter isn't, isn't paying attention. And all of a sudden, the temptation, remember where temptations come from, temptations comes in his mind to go, oh, I bet I could steal that. Now, is, it, is, he, a, is he a drug cartel guy? Is he murdering people in the streets? No. So he takes this. Thing, I don't know what it is, pack cigarettes and a bunch of candy bars and stuffs them in his, in his jacket. And he walks out and he gets hit by a car backing up recklessly and he dies. That kid goes straight to heaven. Think about this for a second. That kid goes straight to heaven. He, the last act he did was a sin. So if you have to say, well, yeah, but all those sins are covered by the blood of Jesus because three or four years earlier, he said, oh, Jesus, and everything's fine. Really? Okay, well, then let's follow that to its logical conclusion. So why can't he go kill somebody? Why can't he rob a bank? Why can't he father children with 15 different women? Why can't he, uh, you know, stick a gun in the, in the face of the store clerk and blow his head off and then walk out with every once? Because remember, you said Jesus a few years earlier, so all the sins are covered. It's stupid. Protestantism is stupid. Thank you for watching The Michael Voris Show. If you'd like to watch the entire episode, please head over to churchmilton.com and sign up as a premium member. If you need to sign up to become a premium member, go to churchmilton.com forward slash Go Premium.